of classic credits. This is going to be another big year for movies. Uh, last episode that we showed a game based off of The Three Stooges. Uh, for this episode I decided to go with another uh, movie related game. Uh, this time The Avengers. Not This Avengers. 1987 by Capcom which might have the most creepy opening ever for an arcade game. Uh, at least disturbing. This Avengers, Captain America and the Avengers, was made in 1991 by developer Data East. Data East is not without its fair share of hits. Bad Dudes, Burger Time, Cobra Command, Heavy Barrel, Karnov, Lock and Chase, and one of my personal favorites, Windjammers for the Neo Geo. All Data East. They, go, they do, however, have a little bit of reputation about phoning it in, so to speak. They make good games, but not quite as good as their competition, and not as quite as the games that they're trying to compete with. So now we have the Avengers. The Avengers! I get to smash. Nope. No Hulk. No Black Widow. No Thor. No Nick Fury. This is the Avengers from 1991. We have Captain America, Iron Man, and Vision. Hawkeye. There are several cameos from other Avengers. Quicksilver. Wonder Man. Wasp. Namor the Submariner. All make appearances. Of the villains, you will see Claw. The Living Laser. Whirlwind, Sentinel, Wizard, Grim Reaper, Shredder, sorry, Mandarin, Juggernaut, Ultron, Crossbones, and Red Skull. The game tells a story uh, between levels with some nicely done comic panels. The plot of the Avengers is pretty simple. Here are the Avengers, an elite group of superheroes. Red Skull creates his own team of supervillains so he can try to take over the world. It's game on. Avengers Assemble. Captain America and the Avengers is a side-scrolling brawler. It was made available in a four-player and two-player cabinet, uh, which was pretty standard for games like this. The object of the game is to smash everything that is not an Avenger into oblivion. You'll notice early on that you can use elements of your environment as weapons. Even rocks and soda cans. Yes, rocks and soda cans. Very heroic. You have shields, you have arrows, you have blasters, and you're using rocks and soda cans. The gameplay is fairly tight. Characters are more or less the same. Uh, many times in the arcade games such as this one, you have one or two characters that have a distinct advantage over the other ones. Not here. All the powers are similar. Attack range, power, endurance, all pretty much the same. It basically boils down to which Avenger that you want to use. Uh, whichever one is not Vision. That walk is just wrong. One thing to note is that your special powers don't take any life away from your character. Uh, this was a common thing that was found in most brawlers uh, that were similar to the Avengers. It's a very nice plus if you ask me. There's nothing like killing yourself with your own moves. So it was, it was really nice that your specials don't hurt you. And of course this keeps you from having to spend as many quarters, which is another nice thing. This game is a little easier than most games in the genre. Uh, you seem to die more often on normal enemies than you do on bosses. Generally the bosses in games like this are the one that make you spend the quarters. So that's also a nice change. So it kind of is a flat difficulty. It doesn't really ramp up and make it easier and so forth. The Avengers is a bit weak in the graphics department. 
they do get some style points for adding the stylized visual sound effects text. Uh, they have some nice death effects on the enemies, and character portraits change a bit giving on the situation, such as damage. Data East did try to mix it up a bit by adding a side-scrolling shooter element to the game. There are several scenes like this in the game and they do a nice job of changing up the action. In these sequences, there is a slight advantage to certain characters. Hawkeye, for example, is much larger due to the vehicle that he rides, which makes dodging attacks a little tougher than the other Avengers. How does Captain America and the Avengers stack up to the other games of the day? Well, when you have true arcade classics, uh, such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Final Fight, released in 1989, two years before this, and then in 1991, you have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, and The Simpsons, the Avengers looks like it falls a bit short. However, despite its subpar sprites, it does play solidly and has some really nice background graphics. Oh, and it has the laugh. Today's episode is special. It's a double header. There was another Avengers arcade game released by Data East in 1995, Avengers in Galactic Storm. Instead of being a brawler like the previous game, Galactic Storm is a fighting game. I'll get this out of the way up front. It's not a very good one. Galactic Storm is based off a comic story arc of the same name, which involved a race of aliens known as the Kree. This game's roster consists of even fewer characters that one would normally identify as Avengers. On the Avengers side, we have Black Knight, Captain America, Crystal, Th and Thunderstrike. On the Kree side, we have Dr. Minerva, Korath, Shadrax, and Supremor. This is where this game carves out its little notch in gaming history, though. Galactic Storm is the first fighting game to use the popular helper system. When you select a character, you get to select another non-playable character that you can summon during the battle to perform special moves to help you in the fight. On the Avengers side, you have... Hey, wait! There's Avengers here! You have Thor, Iron Man, Vision, and Giant Man. The Kree have Atlas, Sentry, Ronin, and Ultimus. The helper system proved to be very popular and is the long-lasting legacy of this rather planned fighter. Like the previous arcade game, Data East was trying to think outside the box. In addition to the normal versus style fighting mode, there is a full-fledged story mode. Every battle is presented as a sort of a boss battle. The enemies are a bit tougher than they are in the versus mode. When you die, you can continue exactly from the point where you got knocked out. It makes this mode feel very unlike what you would consider a fighting game, despite it playing like one. Like the previous game, it tells the story in comic style cutscenes. I have to give Dead Ace credit for attempting something like this. I've always wanted a mode like this in a fighting game. You occasionally find this in a home version of a fighting game, but almost never in an arcade title. So, kudos for Data East for trying something different. With Galactic Storm, Data East opted to use computer-generated graphics to create the sprites, instead of the traditional hand-drawn or live-action digitized sprites of other popular fighters of that era. This is one place that I feel that this game really broke down, it was a good idea, but unless your name starts and ends with Rare in the mid-90s, no other company really had this technique perfected yet. When, you, when compared to the other fighters of the day, like Killer Instinct, that had been released in 1994, a year before this, um, complete with its CG graphics, and then Killer Instinct 2 in 1995, which improved on that formula, 
as well as the traditional hand-drawn games like Fatal Fury 3 or Marvel Super Heroes in 1995. Wait, what? Captain America? Hulk? Iron Man? It even has Wolverine and Spider-Man who team up with the Avengers very often. Juggernaut is in this game? He was even in the original Avengers arcade game! It's almost like Marvel superheroes is more like the Avengers than the Avengers. If I had to say, are these games classics? I believe Captain America and the Avengers it's a very solid brawler. If you like these styles of games, you won't be disappointed if you plunk a few quarters into it. Uh, it did have home versions available for the Genesis, Super NES, uh, and to some extent the Game Boy and Game Gear. Of Avengers and Galactic Storm, I think their heart was in the right place. They tried to make it unique, but it just, it just missed the mark somewhere. It just doesn't feel like right. Theta East should be proud that they introduced a gameplay mechanic though, the helpers, that is still being used in fighters predominantly 17 years later. And that concludes our episode of Classic Credits. Uh, remember, if you like the show, please subscribe. Uh, we will continue to try to make this show better. Uh, and we hope you continue to check it out and enjoy it. And again, uh, to look at games that you may have forgotten or never even heard about. Thank you, and see you next time.